Good morning and uh, welcome to our class on children's ministry. Uh, so last uh, class on Monday, we looked at, uh, you know, how to uh, write a lesson plan. But before that, we looked at uh, the important things that we need to keep in mind when we are preparing a curriculum, uh, how to choose topics. So I just ran you through um, topics for a curriculum uh, for um, uh, ages uh, five to seven. And then we looked at after choosing the topics for the curriculum, we looked at uh, how to begin writing a lesson plan. And another thing to keep in mind while, uh, you know, um, uh, preparing the curriculum is when you choose the topics, write out the learning objectives. Um, and once you have the learning objectives, then you know uh, you can choose the specific narratives that would fit in well for that learning objective that can communicate that spe uh, specific topic that you want to teach. And once you have all of that in place, then uh, we looked at uh, the importance of writing out a lesson plan, how it's important for us to prepare well, why it is important for us to prepare well, uh, looking at how to write a lesson plan. Uh, we looked at uh, the main truth uh, you know, that we need to keep in mind that has to run through the, the lesson, the main truth or the central point. Um, I gave you a, a, a couple of examples. And then we looked at the next thing in the, when writing a lesson plan is a recap, uh, how you can write a recap. You can easy, either do a recap with a quick quiz or a puzzle or, you know, fill in the blanks or whatever, just for, to reiterate what was taught and um, also ask the kids the memory verse in a very creative way you can uh, do that and also how they have applied what they have uh, learned and then we came to uh, the introduction which is the next point in the lesson uh, plan next section in the lesson plan and we talked about how important is this to begin our lesson well if we begin our lesson well you know half the work is done but it's also important for us uh, when we begin with a good lesson to keep, you know, that interest of the children throughout uh, the lesson, uh, how to capture their interest, um, how to keep their um, excitement high, even as you have just finished your introduction, which is very good, but keep the interest level, the curiosity level, the attention level high uh, by doing various things in uh, the less of the lesson and how you're going to communicate uh, the truth. And we said that uh, in the introduction, it's important to establish a point of contact, to connect uh, where, you know, connect with what children are going through, they're experiencing, just arouse their curiosity, something that they can identify with uh, so that, you know, um, they are able to uh, listen to you, they are interested, they would want to learn, they would want to uh, know. And the last thing we said is, you know, keep the lesson, uh, introduction short and brief because you have an entire lesson to teach. And also don't give away, uh, you know, details like what you are going to teach them, which story you are going to tell them, uh, all of those things because they will be totally disinterested if you're telling them you're talking about sin, salvation, repentance, obedience, because nobody wants to hear that. Children are not excited. Uh, and don't tell them the story because if they know the story, then they won't listen to uh, you. So it's important that we uh, keep the introduction short, sweet, but, you know, really juicy, spicy, exciting, uh, so that they are connected and they are listening to us. Now, before we move on to the next points or the next sections in the lesson plan, uh, we'll just pause for a word of prayer. So can one of you please lead us in prayer? Siddharth, can you lead us in prayer, please? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace in this time, Lord. Thank you for this time of learning, Lord. As we learn, Lord, that your spirit helps us to understand and receive. That every teaching will be not on our heart. It will be fruitful and established to do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Siddharth. Uh, I, I, did the other students hear his plan? Okay, I because somebody says I amen. Okay, okay. So we're going to look at the next section in the lesson plan, 
uh, that is, uh, you can, after the introduction, you can do an attention getter. Now, uh, we can begin uh, the lesson, or you can even use the attention getter as an introduction to your whole lesson. Uh, basically, uh, uh, the attention getter, the word itself is to get children's attention. It's to build up their interest. Uh, it's a starting point, uh, you know, what to what you want to teach them and how you want to introduce the topic. So all of these can be included in the attention getter. Basically, it is to get the attention of children, build their interest. Uh, you know, it's a starting point to what you are going to teach them or how you're going to introduce the uh, topic. So you could use various objects as an, in an attention getter. You can also use games, you can use a skit, uh, you can use a discussion activity, you can use various things as an attention getter, okay? So I'm just going to share a few attention getters that will just uh, get you to think. I'm sure you, most of you are uh, creative and you can think more, those of you are working with children. Now, um, for example, I have this um, tray here with me. So on this tray, uh, you know, I have placed uh, uh, a newspaper, okay? And you can see this is uh, my mobile phone, okay? And this is an uh, envelope, okay? It's an envelope here, okay? So I've placed these three uh, on this um, tray. And uh, this is my attention getter for my class, just for example. So you can say, uh, you can show this to the children. So children learn by seeing. Okay, some children also learn by touching. So uh, some children are, uh, they want to do their tactile learners. That means they want to learn by doing. So you can give the child who lo loves to uh, learn by doing or, you know, the interpersonal uh, learners, you can give them, then they can take it and show it around to all the children. And those who learn by touch, they will touch the mobile or they will take it. Or those who learn by smell, they can smell the paper of this more newspaper you know so whatever okay um uh, so you 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 tell them uh, you show this to the kids and you can ask them okay what do you think uh, uh, you know the items on this tray or if you keep it on the table what do they have in common what do these three have in common any idea anyone newspaper phone and uh, an envelope a letter and an envelope what is it in common Writing, okay. Okay, two are paper, but one is a mobile phone. Okay, they carry news, uh, reading material, okay. So basically, when you are writing, reading, uh, what, is, what, what is happening? Communication, right? Okay, so... All you can say, all these things that are displayed on the table or on this in this tray are used to communicate with each other. Okay, uh, the newspaper communicates to us news from around the world. I use the mobile phone to communicate with the people, and I use this letter in this envelope uh, envelope to communicate my ideas, my thoughts to whoever I am uh, writing. Okay, so you can use objects as. Um, an attention getter. Another attention getter you can use is like um, uh, a, uh, you know, a, a discussion, uh, an activity. So you could, uh, you know, pair the children in twos. You can tell them to sit in twos and you can say, hey, just chat with your partner, whoever is your partner. Okay. Uh, just share something about yourself. Also, each of you share with each other what you know about something about yourself something you don't know about yourself or something exciting that happened during the week or just tell them about what you like what you don't like so just give them you know uh, two two minutes so one child take two minutes and then say okay now the next partner will uh, share okay so once you do this activity uh, you can ask them you know did you learn something about the other person they say yes how did what how did you learn you know uh, because that person shared it to me. So what did you learn about? Uh, so you can ask Asha, what did you learn about Kung? So she says, okay, I learned this about Kung, which I never knew before. How did you know Asha? Is because, uh, you know, Kung told me this. Okay, then I asked Kung and Kung says, okay, this is what I learned about Asha. So, you know, uh, how did you know about Asha? Because she shared it with me. So 
how did you both get to know each other is because we both shared about ourselves with each other. And I said, OK, did you only share? What else did you do? What else did they do? They commun Yes, communicated. What did he say? OK, communicated to each other. What happened in the communication? Were you just talking? You were just sharing? Were you just interacting? What were you doing? We're doing Sharing all the talking. Were both of you talking at the same time? No. You were talking. When one was talking, how did you get to know you were? Listening. OK? So how did communication happen? You spoke and you also listened. How did you know about Asha Kung? Because I listened to her. Asha, how did you know about Kung? Because I stopped talking and I had to listen to Kung. So were both of you doing the talking at the same time? No. So, you know, through these two uh, examples, one that I showed you about this objects, the newspaper, and the just this whole lesson, this topic is prayer. Okay. So God uses various means to communicate to us. Okay. So we can get communication to the newspaper. Uh, to mobile phone, to letters. So God uses various ways to communicate. So you can ask the kids, how does God communicate to us? You can say to the pastor, the teacher, how else? To his word, the Bible, and through prayer. Okay. So yes, like uh, Prabhaka says, there's two ways of communication. Now, if you're using this, uh, uh, this example of discussion, then you can say, hey, this, you know, how did communication happen? Did you do all the talking? No, you also had to listen okay so he says you know uh, uh, so can, you can ask them when what do we call talking and listening to god as prayer yes thank you see that so talking and listening to god is prayer but oftentimes what do we do in prayer we only talk but we don't listen but in this activity if you had to do all the listening would you have Known the other person? No. What you had to do, you had to talk, you had to keep quiet and you had to listen. So sometimes we don't know and we think God is not telling us or giving us an answer or helping us is because we are not willing to listen. So then you say prayer is not just talking, 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 but it's also listening. Okay. Another activity that you can do for prayer, you know, is you can get two children to act. So here you can have children who learn by doing tactile learners or interpersonal learners who love talking, moving around. You can get them both uh, to come up in front, place two chairs, you know, uh, their backs facing each other. So one child is facing this side of the wall, that other child is facing that other side of the wall. And just give them, you know, their, uh, their uh, what they have to speak in a piece of paper, okay? Or before class starts, you can give them the sheets of paper and you can say, hey, I want you to act. You be willing. You just have to read one sentence and you have to wait for the other child to read. As the other child reads a sentence, you read the second sentence and so on and so forth. Okay. So you have them um, two seated, both facing either uh, uh, the opposite side of the wall. And so one child says, just say, Tom. Okay. Tom says, dear God, thank you for my mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, uh, auntie, and uncle. Okay, so that is Tom's prayer. And Annie says, Dear God, I love you. Please help me with my exams. Please give me good marks. Tom, thank you for my bed. Thank you for my toys. Thank you for my cycle. Now, this is basically for small children. If you have older children, you have to put in uh, age related things. Okay. Uh, and Annie says, please help me to play good uh, good badminton or run the race tomorrow well. Uh, please help me to run or, uh, you know, uh, run like, uh, who's the famous runner? Uh, huh? Hussein Bolt. <laughs> Hussein Bolt <laughs> tomorrow. And uh, please help me to win the race. Okay. And Tom says, thank you, God, for my food. Thank you. Even though I'm very tired of rice and dal or very tired of you know whatever is your staple diet in your own country or a food, I would rather have pizza or burger. Um, but thank you for my books. Thank you for my friends. And then Annie says, uh, God, thank you for the new jacket uh, and the new shoes that I got today. Thank you very much. OK. And then you can have uh, the kids go back and sit in their place. and. Um, you know, uh, you can say, okay, what kind of prayers did these 
uh, children pray? What kind of prayer did Tom and Annie pray? What kind of prayer did they pray? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the prayer they prayed was uh, uh, Asha says is thank you prayer, help me prayer, complaining prayer. Okay. Help me prayer as well. Okay. Yes. Prayer of asking and receiving. So then you can ask these children, have you prayed these kind of prayers? Okay. And they'll say yes, because most often children pray like this. So you can ask them, you know, uh, do you think this is a pattern of prayer that Jesus wants us to pray? How do you think Jesus wants us to pray? Now, your whole lesson is the Lord's Prayer. Okay, so you're keeping that in the back of your mind. And so you're telling them, you're introducing it to them, uh, to this attention getter. So what do you think? How do you think Jesus wants us to pray? Is this the way he wants us to pray? Did he give us a pattern of praying, a way of praying? So they'll think about it and say, uh, yes, you know, actually Jesus did give us a pattern of prayer. And uh, let me show you and then you can you know, take them to the Bible. Okay. Now, um, another thing you can do is you can have, uh, you know, uh, age, couple of books that are age related. And among that book, you can have a Bible as well. So you can have these books, just give it to the children. Uh, so those children who love by touch, seeing, feeling, sensing, you know, uh, discussing, uh, they will just look at the books. And then you can you can ask them, some can be, a, one can be a science textbook, other can be a math textbook, an English textbook. You can have a magazine, you can have a Bible as well. Okay. And then you can ask them to just flip through the pages and then you can ask them, um, you know, are these books different from each other? They say, yes, how is it different? One is a science textbook, math, and, you know, so on. Um, and one is a Bible. So you can ask them, how is a Bible different from other books here? Uh, and why do you think the Bible is different? Okay. And then you can begin talking about that the Bible is God's word. Uh, and that's the words in the Bible is actually called scripture. It's the words of God. It's actually God's message to man. Okay. It's God communicating himself to man and it's different from other books. So you're basically giving them this whole idea, this knowledge that Bible is different. And how is it different? It is unique and special because it is God speaking to man. It's God's words to man. So just a simple uh, way, a method, but something that will catch there. Uh, attention or you can just have a quiz for them as an attention getter how many books are there in the bible 66 books okay uh the the, the bible is divided into two parts old testament and new testament how many books in the old testament 39 <laughs> <laughs> and you all of us back to Sunday school, please. How many how many books in the New Testament? Nobody from the online students are responding to the quiz. How many books in the New Testament? 27. Thank you. Sorry, Prabhakar. 27, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Okay. How many different people wrote the books in the Bible? Approx 40. 40, you're right. Thank you, Savani. Uh, thank you, Kennedy. How many years was the Bible written? 1,500 years, close. Actually, over 1,600 years. Okay. So good. So you can either, uh, you can start with an, uh, you know, attention getter like this, like a quiz. Or uh, you could even play games with them, you know, uh, like... Uh, you know, uh, if you're teaching them about blind man Bartimaeus, you can have the blind man buff. So you can have that cloth tied around that child's uh, eyes and get the child to catch the others. Be very exciting for them. Or, uh, you know, put a, 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 a shawl or a cloth around their eyes and place objects and they should not step on the objects, but, you know, uh, so you can play that and then you can ask them how easy, difficult it was. And how many of you like to play blind man's buff uh, for two hours? Some children are very naughty and excited. They'll put up their hand. How many of you like to play blind man's buff for half a day with your hand?
hand, with your eyes blinded, see that is putting up his hand, you know. <laughs> Uh, some of them will put up their hand. How many of you like to play it the whole day? There will some children will be very excited. They will still put up their hand for a week. We'll have some of them uh, for a month, but you know some of them will not put up their hand. So why wouldn't you have something tied around your eyes for a whole month or a half a day or a few hours? Why? Because you can't see. You'll trip. You'll fall. You want to enjoy. Uh, and, and move around. Uh, so you can say, you know, uh, there was a man who could not see, who was playing blind man's buff uh, for so many years of his life. Actually, he did not have a cloth tied around his eyes, but he was actually blind. But did he remain blind? Okay, let us, uh, let me tell you the st uh, story. Okay, so then you see, it's a very interesting way of get, catching their attention and playing the game as well, and they'll be uh, interested in listening, OK? Or you can use object lessons to actually communicate, um, uh, you know, uh, as an introduction. Uh, I'll just present that. Um, OK. I'll have to open it. Just let me, uh, give me a second, please. I'll just. Present the okay. Are you able to see the presentation? Okay. OK, so what is an object lesson? I've been talking a lot about object lesson, and it's time for uh, me to help you understand. An object lesson is basically use objects uh, to illustrate a concept, a point, a truth, uh, a learning, or a story by combining it with an object, a trick that will be a visual aid uh, to help children remember the lesson so basically an object lesson is used to illustrate a concept a very difficult concept which children might not be able to understand or relate to when you just tell them but just showing through that object will help uh, so you're illustrating a concept a main truth the central truth a point uh, a truth from god's word a learning from the story uh, you use an object or a trick that would be like a visual aid to help children to remember the lesson uh, it can be an object lesson can be used to introduce uh, a story, introduce a truth, introduce a topic, a topic, or reiterate or reinforce your lesson for the day. Anything, but um, in an object lesson uh, should attract uh, the attention of the children. It just gets the attention of the children. It focuses the interest of the children on the main truth that you are. Uh, teaching them and also these objects will in the future you know serve as a reminder of something that they have uh, learned okay we whenever we see people uh, we see places we see things it always reminds us of what has happened in the past okay hey this person did this to me 10 years back 15 years back when you look at you know some of them or when you go back to the same place you can be reminded of what happened in that place or you know in a restaurant or in a, in a mall something happened you're reminded of that incident some of them don't go back to those places because they don't want to be reminded so people places things objects always remind us so you know god can use the holy spirit can use that object even when they you know are grown up and become adults and they're struggling to in life God can just use that object to bring back the lesson that you have taught or truth that you have taught and God can speak um, in and through that okay uh, and that is why Jesus also used a lot of object lessons right look at the birds of the air the lilies of the field the grass in the field uh, you know uh, if you speak to this mountain uh, you know uh, the sparrows um, uh, the farmer the seed 
and all of those things he used it so that even when he was not there you know when they looked at all of these objects it would reiterate or bring back the truth or the lesson that he was trying to speak to them about faith about forgiveness about uh, you know um, what god can do uh, etc so uh, when you use an object lesson uh, or you're doing an object lesson or using an object for an object lesson, what should you do? Basically, introduce the object. The second thing is teach the basic truth. Okay, you teach the basic truth. And the third thing is you relate the object back to the Bible text or to the Bible truth or the scripture or the, um, the, the story that you are teaching. So the first thing is introduce the object. Uh, second one is teach the basic truth and the third thing is relate the object uh, to the Bible uh, text. Okay, so now I'll just give you some examples of uh, object lessons. Uh, so for example, uh, you know, I, I didn't bring balloons, but uh, you have some balloons, a packet of balloons, uh, you can show it to the children and ask them, uh, now what, what is this? So the children will say these are balloons, okay. And then you can say, what is the purpose of these balloons? So, you know, the children say when, you know, when we blow air into it, uh, it can be used for something special. So you say, yes, when we blow air into these balloons, uh, they can be, they can give a very beautiful look to the room, uh, to the place. Uh, they can add a festive uh, touch to the space. Uh, and it can also be used for a lot of fun games and uh, activities. Now you can tell them what if I decided that I'm going, you know, I'm having a birthday party and I go and buy this whole pack of balloons and uh, instead of blowing the balloons, I just throw it around the room. I just place it around the room. Okay. So you take the balloons and you actually literally throw it around, scatter it around the room. Okay. And then you ask them, um, now, you know, did anyone get any joy or excitement by seeing these balloons lying on the ground? No, they would just think, hey, what a waste of these nice balloons. You know, some of the children might take it and blow it and have fun and enjoy themselves with it. Or somebody would think it's just, you know, it's garbage. We just st stamp on it or they take it and put it in the trash can. Okay. But, you know, uh, if these, if I had blown air into these balloons and I had tied it up and put it up in this room, would the room have looked more festive and, uh, you know, uh, the party would have been uh, looked more colorful and exciting for children? Yes. So you can tell them in the same way, you know, um, uh, you know, this, this balloon that is flat is like a balloon that when, you know, when we teach you the word of God and uh, you just, you know, uh, just listen to it, but you don't do anything about it. It's not filling you up. Okay, and when it's not filling you up, what's the use of this balloon? It's basically no use. It's not, it's not being beautiful. It's not giving any festive touch, festive spirit. It's of no use. No one can enjoy it. But, you know, if you are like this balloon, you take the, another balloon, you blow air into it. And if you are this like this balloon, you know, you've blown full air. It looks very colorful and nice and pretty. You know, you are listening to what the teacher is teaching you in, uh, in, in children's church, in Sunday school. We're learning now about the Word of God. You're filling yourself with the Word of God. You're reading the Word of God. And you're also living the Word of God. You're obeying the Word of God. Then you are like this balloon that is blown, that is, you know, looking beautiful. Uh, you're able to show Jesus to others. People are going to see you and know Jesus. You're going to bring beauty, color, excitement, joy, wherever you uh, go. So instead of just telling the children, hey, you know, everybody, it's important for you to, um, you know, uh, to read your Bible and pray every day because when you read it and, uh, you know, your Bible and obey what it's done, you, you know, you bring a lot of life, you bring joy and happiness. Children are going to say, how can I bring joy and happiness when I read the Bible? But just using this balloon as an example, you know, uh, can give so much of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, insights to this whole concept of what does the word of God do when we fill our lives with the word of God, which is a very important concept, important truth, but see how well it is communicated through these balloons. Okay. Next, you can use a hairdryer or you can use a, as a phone 
okay so you say hey this phone uh, i'm trying to you know trying to dial and trying to i know switched on but it's not working i don't know why it's working can 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 somebody help me here why is it not working anyone can help me okay then some child will say uh, maybe there is no the battery is there's no charge in the battery oh yeah okay so where is my mobile uh, you know charger so i take my mobile charger uh, give that mobile charger please yeah okay you take the mobile charger and say hey great okay i'm going to uh, charge my mobile now so okay so i got my mobile charger and i'm just going to plug it in here okay and then yeah i've got charge it okay it's charging now okay just let me give it a couple of uh, seconds okay and now i switch it on oh wow it's working yes now i'm able to and now i'll be able to call my friend or i'll be send an important message to my uh, parents uh, but why wasn't i able to do it uh, uh, before it was because it had no charge and it can only work when it is plugged in when it's connected okay so this mobile without any charge is you know is like our lives so you're talking about this mobile okay and you're saying this is the object this object is like our lives you know um when when it's uh, when it, it does not have any power it does not have any charge and this is not uh, you know it's not charged then this mobile is of no use okay i can't do anything with this mobile but it can work it can help it can help me to call people when i'm in problem it can send important messages you know when i connect this uh, you know when i connect this mobile i plug it on and it's connected to the main uh, it's connected to the main source okay it's connected to the power so otherwise this mobile is pretty worthless it's pretty useless uh, if it's not charged if it's not plugged on to the power okay so th the same way you can say you know god wants to do amazing things in our life okay so he is you know made it has given us great potential like this mobile has can do a lot of things okay you can do amazing things uh, the same way, just like this mobile that assembles our life, God can do amazing things in our life. But to do amazing things in our life, we have to be plugged uh, into the power. So what is the power? It's not just electricity, but we need to be plugged into God's power. Okay. And what is God's power, power we need to plug into? His word. Yes. So God's power is his word. Okay, so when we are, you know, when we read God's word, it gives us life, it charges us, it gives us the strength. So how can we communicate that God's word is powerful, it gives us life, that, you know, God's power is, um, uh, can be connected uh, to the Bible, to our lives, is just by using this simple uh, phone or you can even use your hair dryer or you can use any uh, uh, electrical appliance it doesn't work unless it's plugged in right if you use a hair dryer or you, you use a electric shaving stick or whatever it doesn't work till it's connected to the main power in the same way or a tv or whatever you know it needs to be connected to the main power and so you can say uh, hey you know how can we be connected to god's source of power and live a life of power so let's discover together and then you can teach them about the word of uh, God okay um, another object lesson that you could use is uh, you know you can just tell them uh, hey everybody I have two bottles here the same size but there's a difference in these two bottles what is different um, one has a cap and one does not have a cap okay so just let's assume the one that has a cap is uh, you know uh, is one that is filled with faith okay now you can't see this bottle filled with faith but faith is actually there and it will show now i will i'll show you how this bottle is filled with faith now this bottle is empty the one that is open is empty it has absolute no faith now what happens when your friend fear comes along okay so what you need to do is uh, you can have gloves and you can just uh, 
you know, stick F E A R here and uh, F E A R here, okay, and then uh, that's fear. What happens when fear comes along? Uh, and just imagine that this two bottles is one child who's filled with faith and the other child who is, you know, uh, has no faith, absolutely no faith. Okay, now what happens when fear comes along to this child? You can name this child, whatever you want to name that child. What happens to this child when fear comes along? So when fear comes along, you know, when fear just, or trials or difficulties or hardships, you know, see what happens, what fear does. Fear can crush you. Fear can torment you, fear can destroy your life, you know, it can, uh, you know, basically uh, feel you leaving, uh, leave you feeling hopeless, useless, hopeless, uh, without any life, any enthusiasm, and you feel dead, okay? This is what happens to a child who has absolutely no faith, okay? And when fear comes along, this is what fear can it can discourage you, make you feel hopeless. You can never come up in life, never do anything because fear torments you and has gripped you. Now, what happens to this child, you know, is full of uh, faith. That's why the bottle is closed, full of faith. What happens when fear comes along? Let's see. see? There's trials. There is a lot of hardships, a lot of difficulties. But what happens? You know, fear is not able to destroy discouraged, uh, you know, put down, uh, but this child who's filled with faith is able to, you know, the, their faith is able to strengthen them, build them, uh, help them to fight against fear and all the discouragement and hopelessness that comes forth. Even if I keep pressing the bottle, see, it's nothing happens, okay? So this is a very difficult concept for children to understand about faith and fear and what fear can do and how faith is important, you know? Uh, so you can just say, then, you know, you've introduced both the objects, uh, you have kind of connected it with your, um, you know, uh, 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 what you're trying to resemble these objects to, then you're teaching the basic truth. And then now you relate it back to the Bible text and say, today we're going to look at, you know, somebody who did not give in to fear, but held on to faith. And because of that person's faith, you know, uh, let's see what was the consequences, whether they were able to overcome, uh, you know, what happened in their life. So you David and Goliath story, you can use this fear and uh, faith, okay? Now, another object lesson is, uh, you know, you can just go to each one child and say, make sure that child does not have a guitar at home or doesn't have a mobile, a thousand rupees note. So you can ask the child, hey, give me thousand rupees. And the child says, uh, he'll just smile at you. Hey, I want thousand rupees. Can you give me? The child says, I don't have. Yeah. Yeah, you can't give me thousand rupees because you don't have. So you go to another child and say, give me a guitar. Says the child says, I don't have a guitar because I'm not learning to play a guitar. Or you can ask another child to give you a mobile and the child says, I don't have a mobile. So then you can ask the children, you know, why could all of these children not give me what I asked? It's because basically they don't have it. Okay. So when you're talking about God is a healer, he's not the author of sickness and disease, then you can say, you know, um, uh, just like like we have been learning that God is not does not give us sickness and disease because he does not have it in the same way, just like these children, you know, they don't have a thousand rupees or a guitar or a mobile and they, hence they can't give it to me. The same way, there is no sickness, there is no disease, there is no pain and suffering in heaven. God does not have it, hence he cannot give it to me. So a difficult concept for children to understand, but just made very easy um, uh, through this. So if you want to talk about, um, you know, how um, uh, Satan tempts us, how Satan destroys us, you know, uh, you can use this object lesson uh, where you can use an egg. So you can say, hey, what is this? And everyone says it's an egg. Okay. And uh, so what happens if I take this egg and hit it on the ground? So the children will say uh, the egg will break. What if I throw it on the wall? It will break. Okay. Uh, now, uh, this egg resembles 
us. You know, just like this egg is very delicate, we too are very delicate. Anyone hits us, uh, throws us off from, uh, you know, uh, a second floor or third floor, we can die, we can hurt ourselves. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, we have an enemy who's Satan, who's always wanting to steal, kill and destroy, destroy our life, steal our peace, our joy, our happiness. So just one, if I just, you know, take the spoon, and if I just hit this egg, what will happen? It will break because this is so delicate. So this spoon is like Satan is or like temptation. And, you know, uh, Satan or temptation is always there around us waiting to destroy us and, uh, you know, uh, destroy our uh, lives. Okay. Now, what happens if, you know, I trust in Jesus, I have faith in him. This vessel here is... Uh, no, is is God his or is Jesus is or his protection? Okay, what if I keep this egg under this uh, vessel, and now if I hit this uh, vessel, will the egg break? No, right? Okay, if I hit it, it doesn't break. Why? Because it is um, uh, because this vessel is protecting the uh, egg in the same way. You know, uh, when we trust in God, when we put our faith in God, you know, he protects us. And even when Satan comes around to destroy our lives or put temptation, you know, God can help us to overcome that temptation. Uh, he will help us to overcome everything that is wrong. And Satan will have no power and authority over our uh, lives. But what if we say, you know, Jesus, I don't need you. I want to do what I want to. I I don't want to obey you. I don't want to obey my parents. You're just so open to the attack of the enemy. The enemy can attack us anytime and can destroy our lives. Okay. So just another example that uh, you could use as another object lesson. So you have introduced the object. You've connected it to what you are talking about in the story. And then you go on to talk about, you know, uh, sin, salvation, temptation, uh, temptation of Jesus, how he overcame it and how he can help us to overcome things in our uh, life. So you can use various things like this. You know, um, another last thing that I will use is uh, talk about greed. You know, when we're talking about uh, Elisha's servant, Gehazi was very greedy. And we say that greed destroys our life. And children will wonder, how can greed destroy our life? So you can say, hey, I have this tissue paper here. OK. Uh, so just imagine this tissue paper is uh, uh, is like any one of us, okay? And we all like, uh, you know, to have things in our life, okay? Uh, so it's okay to have uh, a little thing. So just, you know, you can, you can just say this water resembles various things in our life, okay? So I like to have a new shoe, and I like to have a new uh, pencil box, a bag, uh, you know, uh, a new dress. It's okay. See, uh, I can can I use this tissue paper? Yes, I can still use this tissue paper. But for some of us, you know, who keep on wanting more toys, you know, more clothes, more shoes, you know, uh, more chocolates, uh, good food to eat, and we want more and more and more, even though we have so many pairs of shoes, so many pairs of clothes, you know, uh, so just keep you know, you want more and more and more. What happens? Can I use this tissue paper? No, let me just try. I want to wipe my nose. Okay, I can't. It's just tearing away. Oh, is this? Oh, it's not going to open. So it's all just shredding off in pieces. Is this tissue paper useful now? You know, it has actually this water everything that i wanted has destroyed my life okay so you can talk tell them uh you know we've just been hearing about gehazi how greedy he has been and how his greed destroyed his life in the same way children you know greed destroys our uh, life so you can use these various uh, examples there's so many now all of these are not from my own uh uh you know creativity Th creative thoughts. This is all what I got from Google, from the net. So there are various object lessons. So if you're teaching, you're writing lessons, you can, you know, look up various object lessons and you'll find so many of them. Uh, I like to just share a last one, a very important concept, you know, um, uh, uh, telling children that God has given each one of us, you know, um, 
uh, talents. Uh, he's placed in each one of us specific gifts and talents. Uh, each one of us are unique in our talents, and children will not believe that uh, because they're always comp uh, comparing themselves with others. So you can give them this example of an apple because he's not able to get an apple. I, I just put this picture up. You know, usually when we cut an apple, how do we cut it? Uh, from the center right down, right? From the stalk that is there. Uh, the stock that is there, we just cut it uh, right down in the center. So, uh, so example, if I cut it right down in the center like that, this is how it looks. It's there in your PowerPoint. Uh, and what is there in the center? Seeds, yes. Uh, have you ever, you, we usually cut the apple right down like this, right? Through the center. Has anyone diced the apple in the center like this? Right through the center, in the middle, like this? Have you diced it in the middle? No, if you dice it in the middle, this is what you will see. What have you see? What do you see in the middle? You see a star, right? Did you know there was a star in the apple? Okay, four of them in my class here, in-person students say no. Okay, uh, so most children will say no, we didn't know there was a star. Uh, but you can say, why Why didn't we know there was no, uh, we didn't know that there was a star shaped in that apple where the seeds were kept. It's because we're constantly cutting the apple this way, okay? So this, did you all know that God has placed a star in each one of you? Now don't go and tell your mummies and daddies to take you to uh, the hospital, do a scan. It's not a little, literal star, but God has placed gifts, a unique gift in each one of us each one of us are gifted it's not only just you know you can name some uh, tennis players or uh, you know sports stars or uh, football stars cricket stars uh, you know movie stars and say it's not them only that god has given them talent but god has given each one of you talent and some of you think you don't have a talent because you are constantly looking at yourself in one way but look at the way god has created you he has placed a talent so some of you say hey i don't know what's my talent who do you need to ask god because god has placed a talent in each one of you and he's placed a star in each one of you so go home get an apple cut it down that way and see a star and uh, also believe that god has given you a special gift um, uh, you know, uh, put a star in you and you need to rise up to what he has given you, the gifts that he has given you. Use it. Don't compare yourself with others. Don't look at others' gifts and get jealous of them. But look at your own gift, what God has placed and use it and you will be a star for uh, Jesus. So you'll be a, a, your star material or a star character. You'll be someone great in um, life. So just a few object lessons that you could uh, use uh, to teach um, uh, children okay so we just looked at attention getters today and a few object um, uh, lessons object lessons are powerful truths uh, which can communicate powerfully to children so all you need to do is introduce the objects um, connect the object uh, to you know what you are assembling it to uh, teach the basic truth and relate the object back to the bible text okay we just have one more minute uh, We'll stop here. Anyone has any questions, any thoughts? You could even use object lessons when you're preaching. I know a preacher. I get many of object lessons from a preacher who in church preaches and he uses object lessons and very powerful uh, tool to communicate uh, truths and concepts. Okay, any questions? No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then next week we'll uh, continue with uh, the main teaching content and then uh, just one or two more classes and then we'll finish uh, children's ministry and then Pastor Roshan can take you through with uh, youth ministry. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you everyone for joining class. I hope it's okay. Uh, I posted in the, in, the, in the stream page. I didn't get any much response, so I'd just like uh, to take a minute here to discuss this. Are you all okay if I can uh, post the assessment on Wednesday, 8th March uh, by 6 p.m. And you can submit your assessment on Friday, 10th March um, at 11.59. Is that okay, everybody? Okay, ma'am. Yeah? Okay.
Okay, that's fine. Then um, we'll go with 8 March and then you can submit uh, your uh, as, uh, assessment. Okay. Okay, thank you everyone for joining class. Have a blessed day and the rest of the week and I'll see you on uh, Monday. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor.